How's it going everyone? I'm Keegs, and it's been a while since we've talked anything PC building related, but today I picked up the Razer Basculus 3 V3 gaming mouse, and it's a pretty great mouse, so I just kind of wanted to talk about it, my overall thoughts, and some of the specs in case you wanted to go and pick it up yourself. So, starting off, one of the best things about this mouse is that it has optical switches instead of the mechanical ones, which provide a little bit more speed and definitely more reliability. They won't wear out as quick as the mechanical ones over time. And I'm coming off of the G502 Hero, which you can see here. It is a Logitech brand, and it was a good mouse. I really, I did really like it. Uh, my favorite thing about this mouse was under here, you could put different weights and that was pretty cool so I am losing that but in case you're wondering this mouse the new one that I have here here we go you can see it in all its glory is about 3.5 ounces or 101 grams so it's also got about 10 programmable buttons you've got the one on the side here is your throttle then your forward and backward button on the side your standard right and left mouse clickers and then you've got the scroller, which you can press down on. So you press down. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can. But you can also go left or right. And then you've also got the one up here, which changes your DPI. And there are a few DPI settings. We'll get into that a little bit later. And you've also got the free scroll wheel. So you press that. And now you know it just spins boom effortlessly you press that and back to uh standard clicking uh of the scroll wheel so that's pretty great so if you look at it here so as you can see here on the left side is the new razor basilisk 3 and the right side is my old g502 hero honestly they look very similar their design is like impeccably pretty much the same you can see it's got everything from the little thumb rest pad even the clicker design is almost exactly the same it's got the same scroll wheels and pretty much the same buttons the only thing that the razor doesn't have is these dpi switches up here so uh this one actually has one more button to program than the basculus 3. that being said um this is a programmable button on my g502 hero i believe to get a profile going whereas on the razor you actually do have that button, but it's underneath and it's down here. So if you look closely, I don't know if this will zoom, but uh, this says profile right here and there's a button right here and you can click that and it will go to your profile. But we'll take this away real quick and now you can see when you move it around, it's very smooth. I mean, it like basically just feels like it's gliding and granted all new mouses tend to feel that way, but this one just feels, I think, particularly good. Also interesting of note, it's hard to pick up, but this is actually a braided USB cord and it just feels like slightly more classy. So on the software side of things, you can see you have to download the Razer Synapse software and that allows you to customize it. It would bring you to this screen, which allows you to see all your different devices. And then we're gonna click Razer Basculus V3. Now we're in here, you can see all the programmable buttons over here. And you can see up top, it's got the profile button. And in the profile button, uh, you can set profiles. I only have one right now, but you can add, import, uh, rename, dupl duplicate, export, all those things. And you can do it uh, onboard profiles, which, uh, like I said, is at the bottom of the mouse, I believe. You can also take these profiles from uh, different computers and stuff. I think the uh, export kind of implies that. You also, a really cool feature they have here is scroll acceleration. So the faster you scroll, the faster it will scroll down the screen. Moving on to performance. You can see here that I have only two DPI settings, but it can actually go up to five settings, which I think is pretty nifty there. Also, we can see down here, I'm really on the low end here, but it can go all the way up to 26,000 DPI. Why you would need that many? Uh, I don't know. I would be really interested to hear out in the comments if someone knows exactly why you would need that many, uh, that much DPI, but uh, yeah, that'd be uh, pretty interesting. So over here, your polling rate can also go up to a thousand, which gives uh, much more data updates in a second. Uh, I'm not gonna change that. 
And that's pretty much it for the performance section. Coming into the RGB lighting section, which I think is a popular category these days, you have many different uh, options here. So you can choose the brightness, so you can see my mouse here. Um, it's kind of bright in the room, so I don't know if you're going to get a good representation of how bright this thing can get. So that's the brightness all the way up, and obviously, you know, if I turn it all the way down, you can hardly see it now. So we'll bring that back up to about 70, where it was. And you can also do a switch off lighting effect. So when my monitor turns off or when it's idle for a certain amount of time, I have it right now set to after 10 minutes, it, the lights will just turn off. So um, that's kind of nice. I don't know why you would need it. Maybe if you're trying to go to bed and it's in your room and you don't want the mouse on. So once the monitor turns off, then your mouse will turn off as well. I've had that problem before where mouses will stay on the entire time, even after I have it put the computer into hibernate mode. Over on the right here, you can see there are a few different lighting effects that you can do too. So these are just the quick effects that come with the mouse. And you can see, I believe it comes with eight uh, different kinds of effects that you can have. So right now it's set to static. If you put that down, then you can see here that you can choose from any of these colors um, or you can pick a custom color. But the other ones are, we'll save that one for last. You got breathing. So it just kind of comes in and out if you can see it on the camera. I'm not sure if you can. Let's take the brightness all the way up. Maybe if I turn this guy off and maybe this guy, you can see it a little better. So there you go. All right, lighting effect number two, you got fire. So that's turning kind of red and orangish and uh, it's kind of got a little flame flicker effect on it. Then you have reactive and it is off and you can see I'll have to push it here. So every time I push a button, it'll light up. Push another button, it, it lights up. So it uh, just kind of reacts to what you're doing and it lights up mainly when you, you click. And that's about that. You can set the different color again, the duration for how long it stays there. Uh, coming to Spectrum Cycling, it just cycles through a whole bunch of different colors. Starlight, you see it can flash here, and it's got a few different colors on it. And uh, yeah, you can set those colors. Right now it's set to green and blue, but you can see it just kind of cycling through those randomly. And finally, Wave, and that just kind of cycles through different colors and different directions and gives you a whole bunch of different stuff. And then finally, you've got audio meter. And when you play some music, play some music here, it will respond to that music and just kind of go with the beat. Now over on the right here, you see advanced effects. And if you click that button, you can install the Chroma Studio module and that will allow you to customize any other effects that you would like. So. Uh, to me, it's a little annoying that I have to download an entirely new software for this. And because I am fine with generally the quick effects, I have not downloaded that. But if you are really into downloading and making sure your effects match entirely your rig, then I think that is a must do for you. Finally, we've got calibration and that will just calibrate it to the surface that you are on. And that pretty much wraps it up for the Razer Basilisk 3 gaming mouse. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. Like I said, overall a great mouse. The only thing that kind of bothered me was the scroll was a little touchy, a little finicky. When you would try to scroll, it would press that down button. So if you have that bound to a specific key, then maybe learn to be a little lighter on your touch than I am, or just bind it to uh, something different. Other than that, I love the mouse and I'm really excited to start using it more often. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Keegs and I'll catch you all next time for some more PC building content.